Hi, and welcome back to the Vancouver Life Real Estate Channel. We have created a five-part mortgage series with our colleague and friend, Mikhail Ferreira from the Bank of Montreal. In this series, he answers the most asked questions when it comes to financing real estate. The topics include how and when to finance a pre-sale condo, your options when it comes to down payments on a home, how and how much equity you can access within an existing property, the best ways to finance investment properties, and lastly, how to purchase real estate within a corporation, especially good episode for my realtors and other business owners who operate as an incorporated business. Our guest Mikhail has been with the Bank of Montreal for over 15 years now and consistently finances more real estate than any other mortgage specialist within that organization across all of Canada. Safe to say, he knows what he's talking about and has some incredibly valuable information to share with you. The five-part series launches on Thursday, February the 23rd, and new releases will come out every Thursday at 3 p.m. They're quick, 10-minute episodes that get right to the topic at hand. Be sure to check them all out, as I found them incredibly informative and know that you will too. All right, let's get into today's episode. Welcome back to this week's episode of our mortgage series with Mikhail Ferreira from the Bank of Montreal. And today we are discussing down payments and of course what the CMHC insurance payments will look like if you are under your 20% mm -hmm. and of course how that adds to your payments and what your other options may be. Thanks as always Mikhail for being here today. Thanks guys, good to be back. So largely, this is going to be for probably first time home buyers, yep. people who are, have not gone through the process before and may not know how much money do I actually need to put down to buy a home mm -hmm. to qualify for a mortgage. So when they ask you that, what's the process? What do you say? Yeah. So, you know, a, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, the minimum that you need in order to buy a home uh, is actually 5%, which assuming a purchase price of 500,000 is 25K right um, and a lot of people don't realize that you can get that from you know a gift from family uh, your personal mm -hmm. savings RSP uh, there's multiple ways right and it gets a lot of people in the market faster and uh, the main benefit I see is a lot of people are trying to reach that 20% goal which is you know the best ideal situation but um, you know a lot of people it's going to take a long time so getting into the market quicker is a lot more beneficial yeah I mean if it costs you a little bit to get involved <clears throat> comparatively speaking to what you might make on the property mm -hmm. um, allowing you to really get into that 20% threshold maybe on the second property mm -hmm. right exactly and you know so to touch a little bit on on the the cost so you know the main catch there is if you're if you're putting as little as uh, five percent down on a purchase price of half a million dollars, you'll pay about a nineteen thousand dollar premium, hmm. but it's added onto the mortgage. Oh, so you're not actually paying that out of pocket. Exactly, we'll just finance that into the mortgage. So again, your overall cost is still the twenty five k in that particular case. Now, if you uh, increase your down payment in 5% increments, you can actually reduce your premium even more. So a 10% uh, a uh, pre, uh, you know, down payment would be about a $13,950 premium. Hmm. Um, so, and then a 15% down would be about 11,900. So, so tears down. Yeah. So it, it, you know, if, if the more you can get, of course, of course, twenty percent, nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you can, you know, try to inch up your down payment in any way, it's going to save you a few more dollars as well. What is the reason this insurance exists? Um, so basically, the idea is that uh, a lot of people don't understand what default insurance is, but it's essentially you're paying a premium uh, against your default uh, with a lender. So in the event that you cannot pay, uh, the insurance company will cover the debt. So that's why it's you know it, it's it's potentially higher risk, but it's actually less risk for the bank because they have coverage. Right. Right. Interesting. So. For an insured mortgage then, is this only applicable to primary residences or what if I wanted to buy a secondary residence or an investment property? Could I do that with 5% if it was 500K? No, you can't do that with 5%, but uh, you can do that with 20%, uh, which is uh, oddly enough an insurance option. Uh, and it does come into some, uh, in some cases. So sometimes when you have indigenous land or uh, other types of property, uh, you actually do need to insure it in mm -hmm. order to get the deal to work. Would this be like a leasehold too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in certain circumstances, I've had to do that. Um, but generally speaking, it's uh, it, it's 
mo mostly used for primary resident residences and you can use it as a second uh, property. So if you have a vacation home, yeah. it's technically a second residence, you can use it. Okay. Gotcha. So as we know, 500K in Vancouver does not get you much. Mm -hmm. Do these numbers apply if that same property purchase price is closer to, let's say, 800000 mm -hmm. or does it scale up? Yeah, so the, uh, the calculation is 5% uh, up to 500,000 and then 10% on the portion above that. And mm -hmm. it goes up to basically a million, but 999999. Mm -hmm. So 75K would be the minimum if you're buying a property that's a basically a million dollars. I see, I see. Okay. And over a million dollars, you have to have 20%. So insurance exactly. is. It, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. Run me through the scenario of, okay, I can't pay my mortgage, mm -hmm. but I've got insurance. <laughs> How many months is the CMHC paying my mortgage? Um, well, it's actually, the default actually, from what I understand, it pays the balance upon your foreclosure. So, uh, and, and in most cases, foreclosure happens after 90 days of no payment. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, it's, it's something that... Uh, uh, you know, other parts of the lenders get involved. Um, but in the event that there is a loss, you are, the bank is, or the lender is covered. So. so really, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're trying to get into the real estate market and mm -hmm. you've convinced yourself that you need a hundred thousand dollars to buy a mm -hmm. $500,000 place, you are grossly mistaken mm -hmm. when you can get in for less than half of that. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing is like, I bought my first property, uh, with 5%. Different world, you know, eight, nine years ago. But um, I made that work. I used my RSPs and I used a little bit of a gift. Uh, but that property appreciated significantly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which let let me purchase my next place. And, right. you know, it kind of gets you going. Um, the most important thing is, is, is people, you know, first-time home buyers have this mountain to climb. Mm -hmm. And don't make it, you know, more complicated than it needs to be. Like, if you have access to the money, great. If you don't, there's there's new vehicles now that the government is implementing to help you build that uh, down payment. Mm -hmm. You know, getting in is more important uh, than you, trying to outsave the pace of the market. It's, just mm -hmm. never it seems to work. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't. Especially when you've got inflation. Like, yeah. Like we're talking about. Right. And, 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 you know, there is a catch, right? I mean, these insured deals... You do need to have strong credit, mm. right? You have to have nice, clean credit. You have to have strong income. And, you know, it is a pass or fail thing. Like, you know, 0.01% over the threshold is a decline. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So they're, they're, it's, it's not that easy to get. But you do, the benefit is you actually get the best rate possible it, because it's insured. It does sound like... If you're a young professional, this is a great option for you where Absolutely. you, where you haven't had really time to save mm -hmm. to get involved, but at the same time you're earning a decent income, yep. which will float that mortgage mm -hmm. and scrounge up as much as you can borrow what you can from, from family and get involved. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's that whole, you know, uh, time in the market versus timing the market thing, mm -hmm. right? Big you, time. you can get in, uh, find a home that works for you, uh, quicker than, you know, sooner, sooner than better Then you know, absolutely it will, uh, uh, benefit you. And, and, and a lot of people do get hung up on the premium. Um, but honestly with the appreciation in the market, yeah, it especially over time. Yeah, especially yeah. Over time. It, it, Cause you could rent for five, the, the, you know, if you look at the numbers, you're renting for five years, yeah. right? Versus paying the premium and getting in five years ago, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's always gonna work in your favor to be in the market. Yeah, so. Yeah, I agree. We can well, definitely share stories where we've had potential clients that said, look, I can put away 2,500 bucks a month. I just want a bigger down payment, bigger down payment. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the same property that's in their price range is appreciating at 5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And they just can't catch up and they actually end up getting priced out of the market mm -hmm. possibly forever. Yeah. So it may very well be worth exploring getting in at that 5% and maybe having a similar story to yourself where it allowed you to be a stepping stone property mm -hmm. that over time allowed you to buy something bigger with that 20 points because mm -hmm. you had that equity within the property. You know, and the, it's, it's such, a, such an interesting thing because uh, there is just a common theme that everyone tries to get to that 20%. And I it just, sounds fiscally responsible, it, right? Yeah, and because that's that's very Canadian. It's and it's very <laughs> ideal to get there. You qualify better, your payment smaller. Yeah. Um, but I think the larger issue is the majority of people that are going to use these are younger, mm. you know, getting into their roles and and, and their new jobs. And uh, I just think that taking that little bit of an extra step and getting into the market as quick as quickly as you can just makes sense. It's interesting because, uh, and we've said this many times before, but whether you're renting. Or whether you own, 
you're paying someone's mortgage, (laughs) right? Absolutely. You know, if it could be $2,500 a month and you own it or $2,500 a month and you're helping, you know, someone pay off an investment. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Okay. So for someone looking to make that shift or buy their first home, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah. So you can give me a call, send me an email or reach you on Instagram. Perfect. We'll include all those details in the comments below. Thanks as always for tuning in. Have an awesome day. Thanks.